Hey guys, so welcome back to the channel. My name is Joseph. I'm excited about this video as I'm always excited about all my videos. But trust me, this I'm really excited about because I love the image that we got out of it. And also because it was a little bit of like a challenge to me. Normally when I'm creating such images, I will rather want to create them in the studio so that I have full control over my lighting and know exactly what each light I'm adding to my scene is doing. But then I thought it would be interesting if I rather bring this set outside, work with that natural light or the ambient light and you know, just add in my flashes and see what they do and if they will be able to help me create this stunning, beautiful image. So if you're seeing this video, it means that we were successful with the shoot. And um, let me actually just walk you through, actually before we do that, let me just play a little bit of the behind the scenes so you guys can see the setup and uh, you know we'll come back onto my computer screen I'll show you everything that I did to the image to give it that glow and that punch you know just to make it look more artsy because when I was shooting um, it was looking flat as you will see when I'm popping them on the screen but um, let me just show you everything that happened after you watch this video All right, so let me just talk a little bit about the setup. So initially, when I was doing some of my tests, I was shooting at an ISO of 125. If you look down here, you will see the settings. I was at 125 on ISO, 1600 on shutter speed and f1.4. And then I brought my subject in, you know, maintain the same settings and everything. And then just took a shot without my flashes going off. And now you can see that we do have a lot of fail going on because we can't see our subject. We can't see the outfit. And you can see that they are not matching in colors at all but when I did the edit you can see that we got them to look really pure and white I will show you how I did that in a second but starting off again so this is what we have when none of the lights are going off this is just with a natural light and then this is where we have our edge light or our hair lights going off typically when I'm shooting in the studio I will love to use my strip boxes you know to edge my subjects but this time I'm using the seven inch cone and there's a reason for that I felt that because we're shooting against a gray dark background and she's wearing a white outfit I don't need you know a modifier that is going to spill light from top all the way to bottom that's really going to go waste in my opinion so i thought if i use a seven inch cone we will get a specular light that is actually going to make her hair which is already orange really really glow and we're also going to have like a very hard light hitting it if i go into photoshop real quick and zoom into uh this image for example this was one of the final images you will see that if i can draw around it quickly we have a very beautiful you know glow in her hair and then we have a very thin edge light just going around her arm and that is something that I really love but then again we can see that we do have a ton of contrast in the rest of the image because she's wearing a white outfit and white contrasts really really well with gray or very dark colors like maybe black or something like that so in my mind I knew that in post as well I was going to darken the background even more and so I didn't really want to waste lights that's going to travel all the way to the bottom and rather use a small seven inch cone so that we have the light you know shining exactly where we wanted it to be now for my main lights i ended up using two modifiers so the first one was my seven foot uh shoot through umbrella i've used that in a couple of videos initially i wanted to have that very soft light that you will get out of that large umbrella because of how it spills the light but then i also knew that it meant that my subject is going to blend into the background a little bit because we don't have any pop any contrast in the image and that is something that i will have to create in post and then later on i changed it into my 35 degree deep focus light and i shot that and you can see that if i just you know select the two images and do a side by side comparison you will see that we do have a lot of contrast in the image on the right which was shot with the 
deep focus cone and even in the outfit that she's wearing as well you will see that it has more texture going on in the fabric comparing it to the image on the left which was shot with the um, the seven foot umbrella light. again if I zoom in you can see that we don't have any tell sign of where the shadows are everything is just soft and it just blends in but then if you look at the image on the right you can see that we have this definition the shadow just under her chin and that just makes her pop also we have more specular highlights if you look for example on her forehead you can see that we have specular highlights on her forehead on her cheek on her chin even the catch light in her eyes is more reflective compared to the one on the left and that is the one that we had you know the seven foot uh, shoot through umbrella on so those were just things that i wanted to you know shoot and see if i will love one against the other but i ended up loving the two of them and so i ended up editing the two of them so this is the final edited images i'm going to show you in photoshop everything i did to move the images to look like this so let me just jump right into photoshop and then we can start you know the walk so i'm going to show you with just one of them um, let me just use a soft one because that is something that I initially envisioned and I loved. So let me hide all of these layers and show you guys everything that I did from the beginning. So this is the image that we imported right from Capture One into Photoshop. Nothing has been done onto it. I made a duplicate and what I used that for was basically just, you know, filling up the top. And so I used my content aware fill after I used the lasso tool to draw around and then just fill that area. So it repeated the, you know, the backdrop textures and fill the top part. And then I also just went into, you know, clean setting areas around the bottom here. For example, I didn't like that excess white fabric that we had over here so i got rid of that and also filled in the bottom right here as well so we have a much cleaner look going on all right so after i did that i just run my frequency separation action which is found in my workflow actions and i just use that to you know smoothing the skin you know just get rid of some of the blemishes on her skin you can see before and after we have smoothing things out quite a bit then i went on to run my dodge and burn action where i clean the backdrop just a little bit including her skin just to give her that three-dimensional pop as you can see before and after there were creases in the backdrop and i just burnt those light areas and i dodged it darker areas just so it looks a little bit flatter and more flattering in my opinion afterwards i just went ahead to do a little bit of healing just getting rid of small small lines in the image you can see you can see that it's not really really visible but i just went with my brush and then did that those are very minute details but then later on i also zoomed in into the fabric and then just with a regular brush um, the mixer brush to be precise I was just painting away some of the creases that are found in the fabric so you can see it looks a little bit smoother all right now the next thing is a folder called color correction and this is where I change the colors you know that I was showing you in capture one that um, if I go back to one of the raw shots you'll see in the histogram that we have this blue skewed all the way out of the rest of the histogram meaning that we have a very blue cast in the image both in the highlights or more in the highlights and then also a little bit in the shadows including some magenta or reds so i knew that once i'm in photoshop i will want to get rid of all that blue cast just to make the whites more uniform and then just make everything look you know plain and simple and bright all right so that was what i did inside the color correction i have a ton of layers in them um, let me just start one after the other so the first thing is a levels and that simply just adds a bit of contrast to the image you know before it's flat but after you can see that we just darken down a little bit of the image so our subject can stand out then later on i went and run my hue saturation and over here i did sample the color so if i just double click that when you click on this hand tool which has the arrows in between you can sample any color so over here for example when i click on that you can see that it's telling me that there are blues in there and i have desaturated the blues a lot i think i even went into magentas and also desaturated magenta so that's what i did to be able to move the blues and magentas out of the image and give me a cleaner white look afterwards i created a curves adjustment and what i did over here was just to brighten the image back up again now that i'm looking at it i feel like i just want to bring the opacity down just a little bit let's say 54 percent then i went back into hue saturation and then just did a little bit of an adjustment again you know just to you know unify the tones that were varying a little bit and then i added a tiny bit of color balance so i can you know again skew the blue tone that i 
prominent in the shadows and then just make everything you know just a tiny bit warm so it blends with the rest of the image afterwards i went into hue saturation again and this was just to fine tune the color on her face just a little bit so it blends with the rest of the skin and everything together this is what we are getting you can see that the color really makes a ton of difference in the image afterwards i run my relighting action again if you have my workflow actions all of these are in there if you don't have it now it's a good time for you to get it it's something i use for all my retouching every single time ever since i launched it even before i launched it i was using my workflow actions for my retouching and when i realized that i use it all the time i just made it available to you guys so it can help you work faster and create consistent results every single time so inside my realizing action it just helps me draw focus to my subject so what it does is simply creates two layers one called brighten one called darken and then i use a linear gradient to choose where i want my light to fall so if i for example just hide the darkening and then just turn on the brightening you can see that it is adding a bit of light onto where my subject is but when i add the darkening and even hide the brightening for example do it before and after you can see that it is you know darkening all the areas around and now when i turn on the brightening you can see that it does pull focus to where my subject is if, if you want this to be even more prominent you can just lift it up and it's going to add more light i can go all the way up but this is way too much this is not how i want it to be looking all right so let me just undo that and keep the regular adjustment that we have so this all together gives me this really nice punch in the image after that i run my anti-red action which is also found in my workflow actions because i wanted to reduce the redness in the image just to make everything look a little bit more uniform then again i went and created another adjustment layer called the face tone match because i think her face had a bit of yellow if i zoom into the face and do it before and after you can see that there is a tiny 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 shift i think it goes more towards yellow and i moved it a little bit more towards red right then i added a contrast curve so i can add a bit more contrast pop up the highlights just to make the image stand out a lot you can see that now we have some brightening going on and it just makes her glow look more angelic and that is the feel that i was going for afterwards i added some textures in the background i don't know if it's something that i want to keep and before after before after it can stand alone without the textures it looks really simple really clean but again i'm just showing you that you can still go further to enhance your images you don't always have to use these textures all right then i also run my relighting action one more time after i added the textures because i realized that it was flattening out the image and i wanted there to be a little bit of pop so again i just run my relighting action it's the same thing you can see that it is darkening the corners and it just bring more focus to her face then i run my noise action just to add a bit of noise to the image if i just zoom in really quickly so this is without a noise it makes it look digital you know contrasty but adding this noise just gives it a little bit of like a painterly feel and i just love it when i add it to images that have this theme going on afterwards again i just created a new hue adjustment and then i call this one color cast just to remove any final color cast that we have present in the image so this is pretty much everything that i did on the image and again let me just show you quickly this is a before this is where we started from this is an after if i save this and go into capture one again i can show you a before and after so we can see the image on the left is our raw shots that is where we started from and the image on the right is our edited image all right guys let me know how you feel about the image um let me know if this is something also that you will want to try out if you don't have my workflow actions or any of my melanin skin tone lats or any of my products just go onto my website www.flowshop.com store i have a link down below you can check it out uh you can copy anything to support me so i can you know keep creating more free content educational content like this on the channel and um, yeah let me know how you feel about this edit i'll catch you guys in the next video and remember don't ever give up